Hi everyone, welcome to week 10 of Nutrition Bites. All right, so today we are going to be going over a recipe for crock pot curry. So we'll talk briefly about the ingredients. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the benefits of spices, and then I'm going to share my some of my favorite crock pot meals, other than this curry recipe that I love to make. Uh, and then I'll also share some cook time conversion charts. So if you don't have a crock pot, don't worry. And then I will present the weekly challenge. So short and sweet today, but lots of great information. Okay, so this is the recipe that I love to make for crock pot curry. Now. The ingredients look, list looks really long, but that's mostly because there's a ton of amazing spices in here. If you don't have them all, that's okay. It can certainly taste great without some of them. Um, but again, uh, this is also a really great meal to have if you have a lot of vegetables that you need to get rid of. You can kind of throw whatever you want in it and it's going to taste amazing. Um, but I love to do it with uh, this has garbanzo beans. Um, I've done cauliflower, uh, potatoes. There's just, there's so many different ways that you can do curry um, with or without the tofu. It's great. Um, so one of my favorites, uh, especially to meal prep and make ahead of time um, for that, for those busy weeks. Okay, so this recipe is packed with spices, so it's um, only appropriate that we talk about some of the benefits of certain spices. So there has been quite a bit of research done on many herbs and spices and some of the health promoting activities and properties that they possess. And some of these activities that have been shown are antioxidant activity. Um, some have been shown to be anti-carcinogenic or um, anti-tumorogenic. Um, they've also been shown to be anti-inflammatory or glucose or blood sugar lowering and even cholesterol lowering. So there's tons of different properties that they all each differently have and interact with each other. Um, but some of the most frequently studied herbs and spices include um, clove, rosemary, sage, oregano, cinnamon, chili pepper, ginger, black pepper, turmeric, and garlic. Um, so if you're curious about a certain one, I encourage you to, to look up and look it up and see what sort of health promoting benefits, you know, those specific spices have. Um, but just lots of great reasons to include spices um, in your diet and in your meals. And it's one of the daily dozen, um, that checklist of the 12 things that we want to try to aim to consume and, and do every day, spices is on there. So because of these many health promoting benefits. Okay, so in the article version of this video, I will be sharing three additional recipes. So there'll be the curry recipe, as well as a recipe for crock pot lasagna, which I love also making, and I think it's kind of fun and novel to do it in the crock pot. Um, I'm also going to share a recipe for taco soup. Uh, again, very delicious, um, super great for meal prepping or making a big batch and freezing it. Um, and then I'm going to also share a recipe for enchilada casserole, um, again, in the crock pot, um, just really a great tool to use in the kitchen to make, you know, if you're cooking for a family or you're cooking for one or two, but you need to prep ahead, great, great tool to have. And I encourage you to look into getting one if you don't have one. But if you don't have one, here is a few conversion charts for you. So if you, this one specifically is for a stove crock pot conversion. So if you, um, you can look at this kind of interchangeably um, as far as whether you want to cook it on the crock pot or you want to cook it on the stove. Um, so say you have a recipe that is, uh, the instructions are for the stove top, but you think, okay, I want to see if I can cook this in the crock pot while I'm at work. Here is a conversion chart. So for for example, uh, if if the conventional stovetop time is cooking for 30 to 35 minutes, you can cook it on low in your crock pot for six to eight hours or on high in your crock pot for three to four hours and get a very similar result as cooking it on the stovetop. And this one is for an instant pot. So if you have an instant pot and you want to cook this recipe in your crock pot, or you have a crock pot recipe and you want to cook in your instant pot, this is how this would go. Um, so if you cook in your crock pot for, let's say six hours right here, the instant pot cooking time would be about 36 minutes. Um, and then this is also 
instant pot to stovetop cooking time. So if you're cooking something for four hours on the stovetop, you would need to do 80 minutes in the instant pot. Um, so again, just kind of a helpful tool to make conversions. I will say that using the instant pot can't quite work for all of the recipes that you would do in the crock pot. So for example, the lasagna recipe, I would not recommend uh, doing the lasagna in the instant pot, but for things like chilies and soups, uh, beans, things like that, certainly you can translate that from the crock pot or the stove top to the instant pot. All right, so for this week, uh, the weekly challenge is I would love for you to try meal prepping uh, for yourself using uh, whatever tool you do have, whether that's an Instant Pot or a Crock Pot, um, but prepping a meal big enough that you have extra portions and you can take it for lunch or you can put it in the freezer or you eat it for dinner, um, just to kind of help smooth out your week and make things a little bit simpler. So again, super short this week, but hopefully some helpful information and for fun recipes for you to try. Uh, thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you all next week.